Let's see if it works. Okay, this is about building in a small town. We have many of them along the coast. No map there, but next. Let's see. There we are. The small coastal wooden towns in Norway, they lie around along the, the coast here, all of them about 30 kilometers apart, looking very the same, very much the same, all wooden, white, and they flourished after the Navigation Act was abolished in 1849. Uh, England allowed merchant ships from Norway to navigate the seas and exported timber and imported ideas. So, let's look at how this process started. Research. There. Research flourished because of the trade, because of the ships. You can see one in the left corner there. It was one of the really richest uh, towns in Norway for a long time. I think they had more than 100 ships sailing abroad. And you can see the little island almost in the center of the harbor. This was for a long time uh, like a fortress. And then it became a shipbuilding place. And it took many years before someone thought maybe it would be nice to have buildings for living out there. So, around 25 years ago, they engaged Snöheta <clears throat> in an architectural test. You should visit uh, this town <laughs> to see Snöheta, yes, and the white wooden town. It failed totally. Then they made a competition with five clever architect colleagues from all over Norway. Uh, the winner was this Krit, you can see on the right top. And then no one bought it. <laughs> architect bought one flat and the builder bought the second. And they gave up. For four or five years, the process was stalled, and then again, then they engaged a clever architect, Mr. Bogan, to make flat, uh, flats like a copy of buildings he had made many times before. And then they sold three flats. And they gave up a third time. And then a wise guy said to me, I think you architects, you are all wrong. The secret is very simple. It's, it's, it's a word, it's two words actually. More research, very simple. And it turned out to be another story. I think it's about timing, understanding local and political and cultural history and climate. And very important, intense activism by enthusiasts like Erling Okenau down here and others arranging public meetings, making television programs and film, for example, arranging local meetings and engaging the public. And here is a small test. You can see the map where we just, as a test, took this central area and glued upon the island here to see how large is it. Well, it's quite a portion of old research. So, here is a plan as it has been executed now after 25 years long process. I'm getting old. So, and you see from the famous white spot above research, the navigation mark, you could enter the town or the, the harbor from far 
out on the sea there. And here is the building process started. The ochre building closest to us is an well, existing one he had to keep. And from the other side, you can see the old town. One trick here is to remove uh, cars from the surface. So they are put underneath with lifts and so on. So the different flats, many of them have direct access by lift from the parking garage. Others, may be they have a two-story flat or a house, three-story house, and it's selling. That's interesting. So now it's finished. Uh, the, the last two or three houses, they are being built as we speak. And they are uh, both for living uh, permanently and also, of course, for vacation. And many start their vacation life there and then later on move to be permanent residents. And mostly sell for between five and eight millions. Uh, interestingly, the first developer uh, or, or builder, he went bankrupt last year. Uh, they started with a new one. It looks like it's going okay. So, and people who sell now, they have doubled the price. So it's really profitable to own it for a while. Let's see. Yeah, there you see the kind of summer ambience. Very nice, of course. And all of them, if they want, they have a private place for the boat more or less tied to the door. Uh, so it's occupied mostly during the year. Let's see if I have more interesting pictures. Coming up, yeah, close up. Three-story houses with a loft. Uh, one uh, building may have three flats above each other, so different types. The architecture is not spectacular. It's quite cheaply made, I must say. But uh, even though <laughs> they cost a lot to build because of the foundations, because of so many things had to be done along the perimeter. But Actually, it's very attractive, even for the children living in the central old town. They come here to bath and swim. Uh, here you can see each house has its kind of own quality, privacy, a nice interior, many of them with a the wonderful view looking out towards the sea. The privacy, very important and you recognize the size of the flat, quite ordinary, but functioning. Now, a very short trip to my hometown, part of the year, Lillesand, very similar to Risa, white, and uh, based on originally the seafaring uh, merchant ships. My latest restaurant from 1818, with a new addition, popular in winter even, and even more in summer, of course. This is a very interesting building, late 1700, with a portico in front, with a nice proportioned square columns, and then the <laughs> more or less independent flat uh, wall behind it, with the function determining places and sizes of window. I use this as a learning tool, designing the school in Lille Sound, which actually has become quite an interesting experience. Now it's 45 years old. No tagging, no vandalism, and uh, popular 
even for ceremonies like weddings, uh, funerals even. So, to me, to design uh, a, a serenity sort of uh, building tells me that even a modernism that tries to communicate with the old town. And actually, we have been, uh, no criticism has been uh, said about this building. Very interesting to me, at least. Let's see. Thanks a lot, Jan Inge. Hmm? Was his, uh? I have some very, yeah. it will not go further, no. But I think maybe I have used my allotted time. Yeah. Okay. Thanks Thank a lot. Yeah. See you on the